8 or 24. Number 8. 24 was more challenging. It's Monday, so that means three things. One, I'm not your MCM. Two, it's a Mamba Monday. And three, it's time for the 24 podcast. How are you guys doing? I'm your host, the product of Poverty's Environment, the Pope Chuck Paul. Episode 86, show discipline, nigga. Shout out to Kiss and Nas for that classic. Yeah, we're gonna get right to it. Um, first of all, I'm gonna shout out my cousin Varney. Happy birthday. Fairy ass nigga, that's my cousin, only I can call him that. And happy birthday to the late great Nipsey Hustle. Still love, still miss, beloved. Now, let's get to it. Hope you guys enjoyed your week. Hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. I enjoyed mine. Peace and quiet. Couple games in 2K. Light web work. Just thinking. Chilling in bread by my damn self, how I like it. Um so we're gonna continue off with Kyrie's crazy contract demand. I don't know if I spoke on this last week. I think I only spoke on Kevin Durant requesting the trade and saying he wants Joe Sy to fire Sean Marks and Steve Nash. But let's talk about what uh, Kyrie wanted in his new contract. I'm reading this from a website. All right, Kyrie Irving didn't come to terms on a long-term deal with the Brooklyn Nets, and he instead opted into the final year of his contract. According to Fox Sports, Rick Buecher on his podcast said that Kyrie Irving won his new contract to guarantee he wouldn't have to play more than 60 games in a season. Brooklyn Nets Governor Joe Tsai has already shown he's willing to play hardball with Kyrie Irving by taking the max extension off the table almost immediately, Buecher said. Now part of that may be Kyrie's doing. I'm told he wanted his new contract to guarantee he wouldn't have to play more than 60 games in the season and would not have to play in any back-to-backs, which he apparently referred to as inhumane. This nigga crazy. Look, Ness is probably going to let him walk after the season. Nigga, he ain't worth the headache. Kevin Durant's the only person they really want to try to hold on to. Ben Simmons, we don't even know what, what's happened with him. There's rumors that he was in the group chat and the, and the, the Nets players were asking if he was going to play game four and he just left the group chat. Yeah. Some folks are saying that Kevin Durant would even retire if he's not traded. That is interesting. I would like to see that happen. I say I want him to retire, but I mean... I like to call his bluff. Like I said before, you signed for four years, dog. You either make it work or stay at home for four years. Then go wherever the fuck you want to go. They done paid him to rehab. They gave him Kyrie. They gave him Harden, Ben, motherfucking DeAndre Jordan. Everything he asked for, they gave him. So hey, it's whatever. But just know, when the next CBA come, it might be play for pay, or pay for play, however you wanna say the term. Because they ain't gonna be doing all this fully guaranteed shit no more. They might be like the NFL, you know? Sticking to basketball. Pretty Griner, as you guys know, is serving a nine year prison sentence in Russia. Still negotiating behind the scenes for a prisoner swap. She was asked if she would like to, or I think she's given the opportunity to coach the coach a basketball team in prison. Some folks was like, oh, that's crazy. But you know what, though? 
from a lot of people I know in prison, they read, they do things like get jobs in the library, they sat in the fourth, to help time pass, to better themselves even. So who knows? Let's say, say she does like a year. She's coaching in jail. Who knows when she comes out, that might help her game or may help her to be an actual WNBA women's coach. But who knows, it's still early. Hopefully she's out by the end of the year. Although I still think it's stupid for, for what she did. And she's paying the cost right now, but she's still in my prayers. And also there's a crazy rumor going around that Anthony Davis used to date Brittany Griner back in the day, back in 2013. There's even a tweet from 2013 where Anthony Davis addressed it. Um, I will post it. He says, whoever made that rumor up about me being engaged is corny. I am not engaged, people. This was at, in January 28, 2013. 12.46 p.m. Yeah. And it's funny because you'll see some comments in there from nine years ago. People say stuff like, yo, if y'all had a kid, straight to the league. <laughs> so this rumor was around. This is just not a new village. This, this has been around. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Interesting. I wonder who was, bending, was doing the bending. Hmm? Yeah. Interesting. Sticking to sports, Deshaun Watson um, apologized, and he also said he's willing to miss eight games instead of six if he's since they're, you know, going back in and talk about his punishment, whether it be for the whole season, six games, eight games, whatever. But I'm gonna read you some of his um, apology. I I've watched it online, and he said, "Look." I want to say that I'm truly sorry to all of the women that I have impacted in this situation. The decisions that I made in my life that put me in this position, I would definitely like to have back. But I want to continue to move forward and grow and learn and show that I am a true person of character and I am going to keep pushing forward. Of course, folks are saying like, oh, he's just now apologizing. You know your lawyers don't want you to talk during, during, a, during a court case. You know what I'm saying? And remind you, he's a person who felt that he was... 100% innocent. Now, my thing about this, I think he should have came out and stayed up and said, like, yo, I was paying for hand jobs and some head. But that means you were soliciting, I think the women were soliciting sex. And that means they were performing as prostitutes. At the end of the day, I would have been like, look, if I go down, we all going down. Y'all some prostitutes. Now he's paying. Now he's paying, paying to play. You know, but at the same time, it's like if he's gonna get suspended for a whole season, what happened with um the commander's owner and Robert Kraft? All in similar situations. I'm just saying. Treat everybody the same. You got dudes who who will pop for PEDs who are out for the whole season. Dudes who smack up women, they, they get less than that. My man was getting happy endings. Two courts were saying they ain't find nothing, you know, worth putting him in jail for. But yeah, man. Interesting. Hmm. Gotta love you some, some sports. Gotta love sports. Also, Angela Yee of The Breakfast Club and the Lip Service Podcast is leaving The Breakfast Club after I think 13, 14 years now. And it's crazy. I've read a, a, a post that said Angela, Angela Yee announced that she's leaving The Breakfast Club like Michelle Williams saying she's leaving Destiny's Child. I guess they're trying to say she's the least important person there. You know, but kudos to her. Her show's gonna follow immediately after The Breakfast Club. It's still gonna, show's still gonna go on. It's probably gonna replace her or whatever. But her show, I believe, is called um, All The Way Up or All Up with Angela Yee, something like that. But kudos to her. You know, it's funny because people were, were tagging more from the Joe Button podcast saying things like, oh, you were right, you were right. He said that five years ago. 
and he was booted off the show that he was brought on before Angela Yee left the Breakfast Club. So take that quote unquote prediction with a grain of salt. It's like Max Kellerman predicting that Tom Brady is gonna fall off a cliff eventually. Like you're just waiting for that to come true. Like people say, oh, you're right. Five years later, like, oh, chill, chill out. It's crazy because I, I rarely watched, like I stopped watching the Joe Biden podcast right before they had all had the fallout. I probably watched two clips of the Maul and Rory show, or Rory and Maul. Now it's probably like this past week because I've seen a cool headline. Yeah, that's pretty much about it. Lori Harvey said, did an interview, forgot what, what podcast, Dating on Her Terms. First of all, I didn't know she was 25 years old. Second of all, I would still like to know what is she famous for, besides being attractive. Some women think that's a, an attribute, but whatever. And she was talking about how she almost got married young. I don't know how long ago she was talking about married young, like, you're still young, but whatever. She was talking about how thing like red flags for her was like, if you're still, if a man's still cool with her, cool, cool with his ex. Just funny, because I know a lot of women who still cool with their exes who probably wouldn't give them up, you know, because, oh, they're my friend, I knew them before you. And I'm trying to think in my head, like, a red flag is, is like when a chick dates the father and the son. Ain't that a red flag? But that's a whole other story. Shout out to Diddy. Um, but yeah, dating on her terms, you know, she wants to live a little. You know, she wants she want to fuck niggas. You know what I'm saying? She wants to, you know, dip in the pool here and there. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? But my thing is, when, like, women... Do the yes to the yes and keep keying and clapping. Go girl, I fuck with you bitch and all that. Some of you understand. You don't have her bank account. You don't have her options. And you may not look as good as her. Only some women can do shit like jump from Diddy to Future to Michael B. Jordan and be like, mm, I'm not ready to settle down yet. I'm not ready to settle down yet. So women, be careful who you try to com compete and compare your lives to because she is not one of them. You know what I'm saying? Um, not all people are created equally for various, for various reasons, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's funny, I read one comment and somebody was like, well, if, if Michael B ain't good for you, send him my way, shit. <laughs> and I also find it funny because if he starts dating a white woman people will be upset and then if he says something like white women treated me better he wouldn't get the same you know what you right you did try that Serena Williams got when she said that about her husband that white men just treated her better eh. that's another conversation we'll get into later oh, speaking of which I forgot the guy's name but the, I, I reported it earlier um, this year. The young man who was dating a white girl who was stabbed up by and killed in Florida has officially been charged for second degree murder. So I'll fill you guys in with more of that later. Now, time for the meat and potatoes. We got the P Valley season finale that just dropped. I'm gonna run through it real quick. So after Farrah did that whole exhibit, the Mercedes experience, she invited, well, she sent Mercedes some pictures and a check for 30K. She told Mercedes it was her royalties, you know, good looking out. I'm gonna keep on paying you this at the fourth. So Mercedes went and got her gym. Then while she's in the gym, Mercedes' mother comes in, past the Woodbine who also won the, the mayoral election of Chuck Elisa, who now may go by Mayor Bishop. And something crazy happened. Terrica's mom checked into rehab and said she wanted um, Mayor Bishop Woodbine to watch over Terrica. But she said, you know what? Mercedes, this is your daughter. You raise her, which is pretty dope after she did all the fucked up shit to Mercedes, you know what I'm saying? So, Turk is now with Mercedes. She introduced 
um, Terica to Maine. You know, the Chief I Chief dude got the ankle braces always um, hugged up on Mercedes and whatnot. And he wasn't feeling Mercedes because Lil Murder brought out Mercedes to dance with him while he did this new song called Seven Pounds of Pressure, I believe it's called. I didn't check online, whatever. He wasn't feeling that because, you know, they have a feeling that he killed Pico. Because they know that him and Teak were real close. So he told Mercedes, like, yo, you look like you, you chose those Christmas colors over me. She's like, you know, we all, nobody was noticing. We all, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you rock in red or blue and yellow, when you, when you come through the pink, we all rock, we all on rock and pink. He was like, nah. I got something for that, that faggot ass nigga. She's like, don't be talking about Clifford like that. He was like, nah, the other one. She was like, ooh. <laughs> and at the grandma's welcome back party, because she, she lived, she didn't drink the water. That was a whole other scene. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, Mercedes put two and two together when she started seeing eye contact between um, Murda and Clifford. And yes, he ended up coming out at the end. He ended up dancing with Clifford, kissing them in front of everybody there. In front of the friends and family. It wasn't like the club was officially open then. So, we'll see what happens in season three. Now to Keyshawn. She did a dance, she got her money. Murder gave her, gave her some bread too. Had some money in the trunk and whatnot. So, her kids were at her sister's house, who also lives with her stepmother. She's gonna pick up the kids. Her mom's called Derek. Derek came and got the kids before her and called, see, called um, child services. When she gets home, she sees Derek with the kids. They're asking her about all the bruises on the babies. Oh, how come you ain't called child services at the fourth? She just went black and lost and started attacking Derek. And this dude balled up on the couch like a little bitch. Like, dude, you've you been throwing her around all season. Like, her whole damn, like, since, since you knew her in high school, you've been throwing her around, dog. So he, he, put, he, he went into white privilege, white privilege mode. They arrested her. She called Diamond while she was in jail with some long soliloquy that I wasn't even paying attention to about her hair being long enough. He's like, all right, bet, I'm coming to get you. He's putting shit in the trunk. Who comes and starts fucking him up? Big Bone and some other, dump, some other dude. Whoop him out, tie him up, throw him in the trunk. But they didn't kill him. We we'll have to wait to see what happens next season. Someone got to bell, bell Keyshawn out. She had to call Cliff or somebody. Somebody, goddammit. And also, Power Book 3 season premiere also came out. Some quick tidbits. Kanan came back from VA. You know when kids get out, get, get in trouble in New York City, parents send them down, send them down south to either live or until his shit die down. So his shit's kind of dead now, so he's back. Detective Malcolm Howard can't remember who shot him. Or he doesn't want to remember because the files are smack dead on his table. And Unique is out of prison because Detective can't point him out. So he's good. So we're going to see what happens. It's about to get real, real nasty. Um, Rock got the project sewn up. You know what I'm saying? One whole floor, nothing but crack spots and smoker apartments and shit like that. Whew. Damn. I'm waiting a minute for power, nigga. Sheesh. Well, yeah, man. I'll have to wait another year for P-Valley. Power Book 3 is back. We got to see what happens with Unique. Also, see, I'll be forgetting the brothers' names. Um... Well, Marvin is the one who has who was the father of the jukebox. He's trying to rework that relationship after he done smacked her up for being gay. The other brother wants to break away from Rock and do his own thing. But being that she's like a, a shitty mother, she's like a shitty sister too. So, we'll see how that happens. We'll see how that happens. Oof. Yeah, man. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Before I let go, the TKOMG shop will be open again on 824, our two-year anniversary. Um, I'll cop up everything in there. 
I'm bringing back the low management shirts, long sleeve and short sleeve and scullies just in time for the fall and winter. All right? Like I always say, like, share, subscribe, comment. God is good. God is great. Thank God my paper straight. I am the Pope Chuck Paul. Peace out. Stop looking at my legs.